kickboxing. Beats and rhymes. No one can do it better. Rumors and spray. Where is Don Charles? Then you the boy that's your lovely kid. But his dad is a scumbag. He went from Spencer the knowledge fearer to Spencer. I want all the smoke. I want all the smoke. Fearing. Lord God Spence. No worker of iniquity shall succeed. Yeah. Woo. Now, some people have said Spencer is overreacting with what he's saying, but a lot of people don't understand. In Caribbean culture, what them call juju, black magic, etc., voodoo, is frowned upon by people who have faith in God. And that's what they're saying about Daniel's dad. He's into black magic. But another topic for another time. Voodoo, run up on my magic. Don Charles's absence at the open workout. Tongues are wagging. Where you at, Don? Where you at? Well, Frank Warren has confirmed that Charles remains Dubois' head trainer and will be in his corner as planned for the Joshua fight. Don was missing at the media contents day, Monday. The grand arrivals, Tuesday, Leicester Square. And at the open workout at the Oval Arena on Wednesday. Kieran Farrell did the pads with Daniel. Kieran, a former pro boxer, I actually done a video on what happened to his career after he fought Anthony Crawler and was forced to retire with head injuries, but he's recovered fairly well. And now he was doing the pads, which led to speculation that he might be taking over corner duties from Don. But apparently they're saying Don has a cold and he doesn't want to leave Daniel susceptible, spreading the virus in the camp and he'll be there on Saturday. There was also talk that Daniel has something wrong with his right hand. It's a rumour. The thing is though, all the speculation could have been killed off by Don doing a two minute video link where he wouldn't have to expose no one to no virus or come out of his house and tell us that all's well. Team Dubois all day and all that good stuff. If it was all tea and crumpets, we would have heard something from Don. Don's a great talker and he's not afraid of being filmed and being interviewed, but he doesn't necessarily like these massive weeks. He's obviously worked out that, for him, his time's better spent somewhere else. I think Bunce is talking a load of crap. I've never seen Don look uncomfortable in a media situation at a Wayne. I've never seen it. So I don't know where that's coming from. His absence at all the promotion and events leading up to the fight this week is going to lead to suspicion that there's a rift in the camp, more than likely between Don and Daniel's dad, David. This is what Daniel said at the press conference today, Thursday. Uh, Daniel, I want to come to you. You are the champion. And I want you to clear something up for us, Daniel. The rumours are circling. Where is your trainer, Don Charles? Is there an issue? Is it a case of Don is just sick and not here? What's happened? We haven't seen Don all week. Listen, as long as they're in my corner on fight night, I'm all right. But everything is okay. Yeah, everything's good, you know. So what do we know about David Dubois, Daniel's dad, apparently? He and Daniel are not talking to Caroline after Daniel split with trainer Shane McGrigan and Caroline stayed with Shane and is still with Shane. And there was also allegations that David is the reason that Daniel's boxer trainer arrangement with Mark Tibbs lasted a couple of months. That was before Daniel went on to Shane. He's definitely a talker. Daniel didn't pick up his dad's ability to be articulate, certainly not. And he's very instrumental in Daniel's career. Some say the driving force. He has a huge physical presence, not unlike Daniel. And it appears to me, putting the picture together, he's not going to be a wallflower and not say anything to those handling Daniel's career, whether it's coaching or how he's being managed and promoted. I spoke to Don myself, I spoke to Stan, I spoke to Daniel, and he is ill. He's in bed, ill with the flu. He wanted to come tomorrow to the weigh-in and I told him not to come just to leave it until Saturday, because by then, if he does catch it, the symptoms won't hit him until the following day. That is the situation. And I know there's a problem between them, which is over money. It's not my business, it's their business, but absolute and utter garbage. There's a situation between Don and Stan. I thought it was David Dubois. That's what came up on the Google search. But there's an issue over money between Don and Stan. Well, is that why Don is doing the bare minimum and not turning up at the presses, perhaps? Maybe don't see it like this. For what you're paying me, I'm only obligated to train Daniel for the contracted fight and work the corner on Saturday. That's it. There could be a rift, but Don, out of professional courtesy, if you like, is going to see the task through, but he's just going to do the minimum. I think more will come out post-fight. 
why not split if there's a riff? Like I'm saying, it could be just professional courtesy from Don. And they really don't want to try and get a new coach in. Let's say a week away from the first bell. So all what's left now is to make do with this situation, perhaps. And when the media asks where Don is, just stay with the alibi, he's sick. Somebody from Talk Sport, or it could have been Sky, said it could be mind games. <laughs> it's a long shot. Could be, but I doubt it. Frank said what Spencer's fear of the same was utter garbage. But it's not utter garbage. Spence knows a lot about what's going on in the industry. Frank, I believe, no proof, but I believe unwittingly gave away the game. There's a rift between them about money. They want to pay Don the bare minimum. Train Daniel for the fight. Work the corner on Saturday. But Stan probably saying we don't need Don to cheerlead Daniel in the build up for the fight. From what I've seen, as long as Daniel's dad's there, he doesn't care about anyone pumping him up. As long as dad's there. When we see Don working with Derek Chisora, he's with him every step of the way. Media worker, Wayne, press conference, every step of the way. We see and we hear Don. Something's not quite right. This isn't how Don operates. He's hands-on. He's a hands-on guy. He's not, I'll just train you, work your corner on the night and take my money. That's not Don. I've interviewed Don. I've met Don. That's not Don. But like I said, Daniel and Stan were not talking to Caroline. And I saw Caroline do an interview. She's getting a little emotional about it. The ending between Daniel and Shane and Mark Tibbs especially was like, yo, what happened there? You just signed. You signed with Mark Tibbs. And the rumors were, dad was sticking his sizable size 12 boot into the mix and making it a little awkward for the trainers to do what they were doing. No one can really get to Daniel with smack talk. Nobody. Mention his dad, though. That's the Achilles heel. Now come here. You see all this nonsense from Spencer Fear at the night? Look at that whistle. The yeah, Spencer Fear. What a load of... Who's going to be in your corner on Saturday? Yeah. Oh, Don. It's bullshit. Yeah. Spencer's a troublemaker, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're going to silence all the haters, all the troublemakers. You know, um, you know who you are out there. Spencer Fear, you know, he's a terrible guy. He's got... You know, it's just yeah. Show story. him them rocket launchers. Yeah. Eddie Hearn was reminding Frank, I believe at the media content day, that they had to bring Stan up in the corner during the fight. They had to bring Stan right up in the corner to give Daniel words of encouragement and to have his presence there so he wouldn't quit against Miller. Now, what bearing this will have on Saturday? I don't think it will have much bearing, man. Like, Daniel is a strange dude, bro. The strange dude. Anyhow, weighing tomorrow. It should be a lively weighing. There's a lot of tasty matchups there. Ishmael Davis, Josh Kelly, they got into it a little. Aquaman Ishmael. Ishmael thought that Josh was overlooking him. And you know, Ishmael got the little road man thing from Leeds talking about where he comes from. If you say the wrong word, you can get deleted in Leeds. Josh Kelly said. He hurt their common opponent, Troy Williamson, and done a better job on him than Ishmael did. That he's on another level. Just look at the resume. Shiraz and Tyler Denny, very good fighters, both of them. But too classy. Too classy lads. They, they never got into that, even in the face-off. They're both extremely confident they can win. But it was never this heavy animosity between their back and forths. Willie Hutchinson... And Boatsy, well, you know Willie and his mouth. Boatsy didn't rise to it. The stare down was quite intense. Boatsy, that weight cut, I'm not sure if it's doing him any good. Lady Chan pointed that out on Twitter. Big up, Chan. Warrington Kakache. Kakache, very confident, but like he said, he ain't got a bad word to say about Warrington. And Warrington, he wasn't very aggressive. We've seen Warrington a little more aggressive than that. They seem to like each other. The old Warrington used to piss me off because he's very high energy, a lot of talking. But yo, we need him back. This withdrawn Warrington, I don't like it. I don't like it for Josh. The wear and tear, two bad stoppage defeats since 2021. The one to Mauricio Lara and the recent one to Lee Wood. Has that not the stuffing out of his fighting spirit? Because to me, Warrington without the energy is not Warrington. Apparently he sold a bucket load of tickets to them Leeds fans. And that's why Eddie and Frank arranged this fight, didn't they? The IBF have withdrawn sanctioning of the bout as a title fight. Eddie Hearn and Warrington have been up in arms about it. 
I don't know why. I mean, Warrington's lost his last two, and then fights for at Feather. He's done nothing at Super Feather. Boxing beats and rhymes. No one can do it better. Crazy. It's crazy. Crazy. What is it? Lack of fight dates. No opponents. Nothing really popping over there at the PBC. Roley's asking Liam Paro for a fight. Now Devin doesn't want it. It's going to be more and more common. The PBC fighters who do want to fight and not stay on the sidelines inactive. They're going to be trying to get over to the zone and if possible over to Riyadh. Tim Zhu is going to fight Bakram for the IBF 154 pound title. But it's Tom Brown, Kathy Duva's in the mix and No Limit Boxing. Tim Zhu's people from Australia who I hear are putting up the money to bankroll this card. So the PBC now needs second and third parties to do these cards. Apparently Amazon ain't giving them a budget so this is how they've got to do it. They've got to outsource the fighters like... Canelo, Charlo, I saw that on zone. I don't think I paid for it as well. The Mungia fight, I think I paid for that. That was on zone, And I paid for the Belanga fight the other week. But it's like Canelo hasn't left the zone really. And the PBC have to put up them guarantees for Canelo, them 30 million guarantees. But it looks like zone getting a better deal out of it. They don't have to put up the guarantee. What did he do? 600,000 buys against Belanga? That's phenomenal. In the current state with all the piracy, illegal streaming issues. Against Belanga? Canelo could be the last of a dying breed in America. Oh, we we'll sign you for a four fight deal. 30 million guarantee each fight. You know, one Canelo purse could fund a season's worth of boxing. The fighters are still inactive. Like I said, Roley is looking to jump off the grid to get his next fight against Liam Paro. They haven't put on one non pay per view card. Not one on Amazon. The budget's getting blown on Canelo's guarantees. Be interesting to see what they do when that contract's up. 650,000 pay-per-view buys. I'd be shocked if the majority of them pay-per-views are not generated on the zone. Why? Amazon do no advertising for the PBC. None. They got no budget, no advertising. If there is any advertising, I haven't seen it. Whatever profits are there, they have to divide up with the zone. Great numbers though. There'll be no more bidding wars for Canelo's contract in America. That's when his friendship with Turkey is going to start, I'm guessing, if he's going to continue fighting. As far as the zone are concerned, why are we going to enter a bidding war? We've got him here already. They'll be happy for the PBC to pay him 30 million. The traffic's going to be coming their way anyway. There's only one more fight for the PBC to make for Canelo over there. And that's the Benavides fight. And it looks like Canelo and Benavides could be chasing the same fight. I heard some talk of Canelo looking to fight the winner of Bivol and Baturbiev. Benavides wants that fight too. He's at light heavy right now. Only thing though is that PBC don't have a stake in the October the 12th fight. That's between a matrim and a top rank fighter. Eventually the traffic has to go to Riyadh season. Eventually. It is what it is. Boxing beats and rhymes. No one can do it better. There was this very famous boxer named Jack Johnson and he was whooping ass. Um, everybody ass. But mostly white folks ass. He was whooping a lot of white folks ass. And he had a white woman. May West, they couldn't stop this black man. So they gave him trafficking. In the 1800s, taking white women across the lines was... Faze on Love, an American comedian. Everybody's talking about this Diddy story. He's reminding us that they got Jack Johnson for trafficking, like they got Diddy. Well, it wasn't called trafficking back then. It was called the Man Act. They trumped it up to put Jack in jail. Jack fleed to Europe, to Germany. And then France lost his title in Cuba years later to Jess Willard. Done a deal to do a little jail time and then got his freedom in America. And as for Jack Johnson dating Mae West, incorrect. Mae West used to date Gorilla Jones, the middleweight champion. It's good to be the historian of the boxing community. I take the job seriously. Don't worry, and I'll tell you a story for you. I'll clean it up for you, son. Boxing beats and rhymes. No one can do it better.